Hi guys, I'm Dave Cheston of Kindlepreneur, and just recently Amazon silently changed their Kindle keywords rules uh, and added three more. Now, isn't that just like them to do that? No warning or heads up, just an update in the mountains of FAQs and documentation for authors just to figure out. So what are these changes and why did they come? What did they mean? Well, in this video, I hope to tell you all about that and so that you as an author can make the right decisions and make sure that your books stay kosher while getting the most exposure that they can. But before we get into that, if you haven't, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to the right so as to get notified when my next video comes out. And with that, let's begin. Okay, so as you saw on the display that I had, there are three new rules that Amazon has added. Let's go ahead and cover each of those. The first new rule is words already mentioned in your book categories. This here is proof that Amazon looks at your keywords to make their decision if you stay in a category. However, as I'll discuss later, this is more of a recommendation to authors uh, to not waste one of your KDP box phrases on a word or phrase that is already in the category string. So say, uh, for example, your category is literature and fiction, action and adventure, classics. It recommends that you don't use words like action and adventure or classics because you already have that attached to your book just by the category. However, as I've discussed, you need to ensure you have specific category phrases in your keyword boxes or else Amazon will remove you from the category. To do this, for rocket owners, just find your category and click keywords. Here, you will see all the phrases and keywords that have been shown to improve your chances to stay in a category. So be sure to use those in one of your seven KDP boxes to ensure you maintain your status in that category. The second new rule is to not use brand names that you don't own the rights to. This is based on some legal issues and complaints that have occurred due to Amazon showing the wrong products for brand searches and some trademark issues as well. And the final new rule is HTML, which is a form of web code. This one makes me chuckle. The inside scoop on this is that there were services popping up all over the place that were working to hide code in the seven KDP boxes so that their systems could penetrate from the inside or pass information back to the coders. Crazy, right? Well, on top of this, this also caused problems for Amazon's side because their system was having a hard time showing the code. Okay, so now that you know about the three new rules that have been added, let's go over all the different rules and exactly what they mean. Because as you'll see, some of them are maybe hard requirements and others are just merely suggestions. Let's start with the first two rules. Avoid putting in information that is covered elsewhere in your book's metadata, like title and contributors, etc. And avoid words already mentioned in your book's categories. These two are really guidelines. Like I said earlier about the categories, Amazon's just telling you that they already saw the word somewhere else. So don't waste a KDP box on something that they have already seen. The next two are pretty hard rules and requirements. Avoid subjective claims about quality and time sensitive statements. If you violate these, there's a good chance that Amazon will at some point flag your book and make you change them or not allow you to publish. They just don't want authors making Amazon search results make a claim of quality of a book and nor provide false information. The next one needs its own discussion. Information common to most items in the category. Things like books. What they're saying is they don't want you to target something like audiobook or book in your seven KDP keywords. That's because they don't want a different format of a book showing up in the search results for some other search phrase. This is a rule where sometimes Amazon will flag you if you have a book or audiobook in your seven keywords. I say this because sometimes the word book is a descriptor, like workbook, or the description of a text like the Book of Enoch. The next two are spelling errors, variants of a word through spacing or pluralization or capitalization, except for different translations like Mao Zedong and, well, Zedong. Generally, these two are guidelines due to necessity. As some experiments uh, I did on Kindlepreneur showed, Amazon's A9 algorithm looks at your words you enter into your seven boxes and already attaches pluralizations, spelling differences, and capitalizations, and even common spelling errors. So they're saying to not waste space in your seven KDB boxes going after those since they already do this. The next two are about trademark protection. The brand one that I discussed earlier and Amazon program names like Kindle Unlimited or KDP Select. Again, it's just Amazon protecting itself as well as its assets. Finally, there is the rule of avoiding quotations. They ask this because of the way their system is built using Boolean search criteria. 
Don't worry about what Boolean is, but with regards to this, if you are using Boolean and you put something in quotes, you are literally telling the search system only this exact phrase and nothing else. No pluralization or anything. This severely limits your reach. An example, if you put into one of your seven KDP boxes, epic adventure hot romance with quotations, then Amazon's system will only show for that exact phrase and nothing else. But like I showed in my last video on how to fill your seven KDP boxes, if you don't put the quotations around it, Amazon will index you for epic, adventure, hot, romance, epic adventure, hot romance, hot adventure romance, and so on. So as you can see, you will show up for a lot more and benefit from it. So like they're saying, don't use quotations. And finally, there's the HTML one, which I explained earlier. So there you have it. There's the new rules of Amazon explained as well so that you can take that information and use it to your benefit. I hope this helps. And if you don't have Publisher Rocket, be sure to check that out at publisherrocket.com. And with that, I'm Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur signing off. Cheers.